After maxing a level 3 skiller at the very end of 2023, I've decided to dive into uncharted territory by making my first ever true main account. I did have a main account in the past, but the farthest I've progressed was the Dragon Slayer and Monkey Madness quests. I've never gotten a fire cape, never did barrows, definitely didn't do any GWD, and I haven't even done desert treasure before. So forget what you know about my past accounts and that I haven't even touched a combat set since 2014, and join me while I play OSRS in its intended fashion for the very first time ever. This is Maxing a Main. What's up guys, welcome back to episode 3 of Maxing a Main. In today's video, we are basically going to be speedrunning every single free-to-play quest. That's right, they're all going to be green logged by the end of the video. And then after that, the next episode, we're going to have to worry about trying to make enough money to buy a bond in free-to-play. But that's an issue I got to deal with in the next episode. But before we get into questing this episode, we are going to need to get up to at least level 37 magic. Level 37 magic unlocks the Faldor teleport, which would make it so that we have every single free-to-play teleport available to us, which will let us do these quests so, so much faster. But before we do that, since we have like no bank right now, I do have all of these cowhides that I want to turn into hard leather. So we're going to need at least around 3000 GP in our bank in order to do that. It's a good thing we still have all of this black armor that we don't need anymore. So I'm going to sell it in the grand exchange, and then we should have enough money to go and tan all of these hides. Now that we have 5,700 GP, let's take it out of the bank, grab some cowhide, and let's head on over to Alcarid and get tanning. So an inventory of hard leather is 7.3K, and an inventory of cowhides is 4.7K. So we are gonna be making some pretty decent money here. So I guess I'll see you guys when all of these cowhides are tanned. In the middle of tanning these hides, and we just got our first drill sergeant random event. And let's see what we get from this reward. We got the camo top. Let's pick it up real quick. So ugly. I don't... What are... Why does it look like that? What? There's like breasts on this thing. Subscribe for rune breasts. Like what? Like... <laughs> like it's crazy. See, look, there's me from the side. And boom. There we go. We are finally done making all of these hard leathers. All right, let's see how much these hard leathers are currently going for. They are going for 270, okay. I guess while we wait for these to sell, I'm gonna start buying some of the quest items that we need. And just in time, the hard leather has sold. I kind of really needed everything to sell so that I can continue to buy stuff. Assuming I didn't miss anything, we now have absolutely everything that we need to complete every single free-to-play quest. However, as I said, I would like to get to level 37 magic first. Hopefully this amount of runes will be enough in order to get to level 37 magic. I have absolutely no idea, but uh, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the cows. That way I can train my magic there and continue picking up cowhide because it did make me a pretty good amount of cash. And all right, looking good. Let's get to it. Hey, just got level 28 prayer. We're now level 38 combat as well. Not only that, but we're also level 13 magic. We can now cast Fire Strike, which is pretty nice. I mean, our max hit right now is a 6, so we could actually one-hit these calves. And now it's saying that a 6 isn't our max hit, so we could probably hit 7s even. Oh, I'm sorry. We can hit 8s. We can one-hit cows. That's crazy. So this is me right now. This is kind of how I can AFK for like a little bit of time. We're about to get level 17 magic, and that's very exciting because at level 17 magic, we unlock Wind Bolt. So even though I was able to one-hit everything with Fire Strike already, using Windbolt, I'll only need one inventory space filled with runes, which means I get to have more cowhide per inventory. Didn't even realize until just now, but we got 25 magic. We can finally teleport to Varrock. Good thing I don't have any law runes in the bank. Oh wait, no, I do. I do. I got one from the clue scroll that we did. So whenever we're done here, we're actually going to be able to teleport to Varrock, which is really cool. And here it is, level 30 magic. Now, the only combat set that we don't have at level 30 is our very sad level 3 range. But as I said before, I'm not going to be worried about range until we are a member. And I'll be able to use things like darts or knives or whatever. So it's just really not worth doing in free-to-play at all. So I just came up with an idea. Instead of killing cows for cowhide, I could be killing imps for beads. Each bead is going for around 2,000 GP each right now. And to make that money with cow hides, I'd have to kill 10 cows. So if I kill imps and I get bead drops in less than 10 kills every time, we should make more money than we would with cow hides. I'm not sure how often they drop beads. I don't really feel like looking it up. I'm just going to give it a shot. So let's head back to Varrock. I'm going to buy some more chaos runes. 
and then we're gonna head out to Karamja. I'll just buy another 750. I'm pretty sure that 957 Chaos Rune should be enough to get us to level 37 magic. I'm not going to tan the cow hides this time, even though I technically could. Uh, I just don't feel like doing that right now. And I might actually have to because, okay, that's annoying. So I guess we'll just do those later. Just going to top up on the earth and fire runes as well. All right, we are here at Karamja. Back in like 2008, I used to train here with killing these imps all the time for beads. I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but hopefully it works out. If not, it's not a big deal. We only have about 150k total on all of these chaos runes. And there's our first bead. We got the yellow bead, which I think is the cheapest one, and it's worth about 1800 each. I did not even realize these drop fiendish ashes because I haven't killed these things in forever. So I just picked them up and I saw that you could scatter. So I clicked it and 10 prayer XP per fiendish ash. So this is even better prayer XP training as well. All right. And we now have our first inventory of beads, which is going to bring us a total of 51.5k. That's honestly not too bad. These white beads, which I'm getting the least of, go for 4k. I wish we can get some more of those. But yeah, now I just got to figure out how I'm going to handle banking because, yeah, I can't go down here and bank because that's members. So I guess I'll just teleport to Lumbridge and then run back to Drainer Village and then go i guess go back um yeah i guess that's what we're doing all right we got a big level coming in here and it is level 30 prayer absolutely beautiful it also got us up to level 39 combat which is very nice it looks so clean now i can't believe that we got 13,368 prayer xp in free to play with no help of a gilded altar or anything that's just so many bones it's crazy hey there it is level 37 magic we could finally get out of here and teleport to falador and let's get out of here i've been picking up the magic hats as well just because they sell for something i don't i don't even know how much do they go for 279 yeah that's not bad i'm actually gonna go to lumbridge first because we are going to go to alcarid and tan the rest of those cow hides that i got that way we could actually sell them instead of them sitting in the bank all the time so we're going to do that real quick. Then we're going to head to Grand Exchange, sell everything, make sure we have food and gear, make sure that we have the right runes in order to teleport everywhere, and then we will get questing. Now we're finally able to sell these hard leathers. That change that they made that you need all of these requirements in order to sell basic items is literally the worst. Because imagine you're a new player and you go up to a high level player, you ask him how to make money. He says something like, I don't know, you should try mining clay. And then you go and you look up the price of clay. You see that you can make some good money on it. You mine a whole bunch of it for hours and hours and hours. But then you go to sell it. Turns out you can't sell it because the game says go f yourself. That is not fun for new players whatsoever. I get it's a problem with bots. But 20 hours plus 10 quest points and all this other stuff, unless you have an actual main account or have played this game before, yeah, those stats are easy to get. But if you're a new player just trying out the game to see if you even like it and you can't even sell the stuff that you just spent hours creating, that is not a fun time. It's not a fun time for literally anybody. I'm going to throw these in for 265 and they insta sold for 73k. Very nice. We're back to just over a 100k cash stack, which is awesome. Very happy about that. But... Let's buy some runes real quick for teleports. All right, so we should be good to go with these quests. These are our current stats, and our combat level is 39. I'm very, very happy with how this account is going. Now let's stop delaying, and we'll get in to the speed run. Well, it's not really a speed run. It's just me doing a bunch of them kind of efficiently. But yeah, all of these are going to be green logged. Let's go. Okay, so I've never actually done anything like this before, where I tried to do quests efficiently. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take, but my goal is to get it done in under three hours. Every single one of these quests done, including Dragon Slayer, in under three hours. Let's see if we can do it. Hopefully we can. Our timer is going to be down here. We're going to start once this hits five minutes. And uh, yeah, I guess we will see how long it takes. Go to Lumbridge. I'm going to run upstairs real quick and start Rune Mysteries gonna go over here start x marks the spot as well we'll have a bunch of quests going at the same time keep in mind my inventory is gonna be pretty heavy and we only have one agility and we don't have any energy or stamina potions or anything like that so so we're gonna pretty much be walking almost this entire time which is gonna add a ton of time to our end time but it is what it is and there we go level two crafting very nice let's start and finish imp catcher all right, there we go. We get an amulet of accuracy, one quest point, and 875 magic XP. 
Apparently, I never actually started X marks a spot. That's annoying. I already talked to him. It says I started it, but then it says I got to talk to him again. And X marks the spot has been completed. Giving us an antique lamp, 200 GP, and a beginner clue scroll. We already have a beginner clue scroll in the bank, unfortunately. But this antique lamp is going to go on prayer because there's not really much else I really can do with it. There's a free 300 prayer XP. Very nice. And Romeo and Juliet has been completed, giving us five more quest points. Doric's quest has been started. And Doric's quest has been completed, giving us a one quest point, 180 GP, and 1300 mining XP, which is perfect because it gets us up to level 11 mining. And in order to do the Knight's Sword quest, we needed 10 mining. So there we go. That's out of the way. Goblin Diplomacy is now done, giving us five more quest points, a gold bar, and 200 crafting XP, which is pretty cool because it brought us up to level four crafting. And shortly after, Pirate's Treasure has been completed for two more quest points and One-Eyed Hector's Treasure, which has a gold ring and an emerald. I also think we got some coins. I could be wrong. We're almost at the one hour mark, but here we go. Black Knight's Fortress is completed, giving us three quest points and 2,500 GP. We're now at 21 total quest points. And that is Below Ice Mountain, giving us an additional quest point in 2K. And now we can access the Ruins of Camdozel. I don't think we're ever going to do that, but I don't know. Maybe there's a member's quest that ties into this. I doubt it, but it is a pretty cool place. But yeah, let's continue chugging along. Let's drink from this cauldron and the witch's potion has also been completed, giving us another quest point, 325 magic XP. We are very close to level 38 magic, which is pretty cool. Hey, we just got level 38 magic from teleporting back to Falador. Ooh, we just got our first dunce event. If you guys don't know, you can cheese your way through this. I've said this like multiple times over the last like couple years on my channel. But once you have the first answer, so this one's the plate body, you can click on it. And then instead of hitting click to continue, you can just click on the teacher again. Click on the plate body. Click on the teacher. Click on the plate body. And there we go. If you didn't know, now you know. And this book is going to go right on to prayer. 450 prayer XP. That's not bad at all. We're only 10 XP away from level 31. So I think I, I'll just kill a couple goblins real quick. Here we go. Level 31 prayer. We can now enter the Edgeville Monastery, which is cool. I forgot about that. And we can now use the prayer ultimate strength. And Rune Mysteries has been completed as well, giving us another quest point, an air talisman, and access to the Rune Essence Mines. So after giving my 25 bones to Wizard Triborn for Demon Slayer, turns out I forgot to grab my Chaos Rune, so we can't use our magic here, but it's not really a big deal because little did you know, Count Draenor can apparently be beat to death with a stick. And here we go, we just got three quest points and 4,825 attack XP, which brought us all the way up to level 32 attack. And we're super, super close to level 33 attack as well. Thank you, Ernest, for your four quest points and 300 GP. And here comes the big boy. The Knight Sword quest has been completed, giving us one quest point and 12,725 smithing XP, which brought us all the way up to level 29 smithing, almost level 30. And we now have a total quest points of 32, which is the exact amount that we need to be able to start Dragon Slayer. And there he is, Delrith, the big man on campus, the level 27 demon. And Demon Slayer is done, giving us access to that really cool one-time emote and no quest completion screen. I think they took it away because people might have been dying or something. But yeah, Demon Slayer's done. Prince Alley Rescue has been completed, giving us three quest points, 700 GP, and we can now use the Alcarid Gate for free. And Mistlin Mystery is done, giving us an additional quest point, 600 crafting XP, and an uncut ruby, emerald, and sapphire, bringing our total quest points up to 39, and a crafting level of level 8. Now the last quest that we have before Dragon Slayer is the Corsair Curse, and I have never done that quest before in my life. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, since we only have about 40 minutes left on the timer before we hit the 3 hour mark. I'm probably not going to make it, I can't imagine I will, but we're going to try our best. And the final fight of Corsair Curse has been completed. Let's go talk to Captain Talk and get this quest completed. And we have finally completed the Corsair Curse, giving us two quest points and access to the Corsair Cove Bank. This is the first time I've ever been here. I don't know if I ever need to come back here. I'm assuming I do at some point because I think this is the Myth Guild over here. And I think this is where you do Dragon Slayer 2. I have no idea. I'm just going off of the icons on the map. So I'll probably see this place again in the far, far future. 
I don't really know why else I would come here. We also have about 16 minutes left until we hit the three hour mark. I'm 99% sure we can't start and finish Dragon Slayer in less than 20 minutes, but it is kind of unfortunate because if there wasn't any of the new quests, such as Blow Ice Mountain, the Corsair Curse, Mistlin Mysteries, or X Marks a Spot, I feel like the time that I spent on those, especially Below Ice Mountain, there's like a five minute cutscene in that quest. But if none of those existed, I'm almost positive I could have beaten every single free to play quest in under three hours. But hey, I'm not going to complain about free to play players getting more content because we all know they desperately need it. I've only done Dragon Slayer twice in my life and the last time I did it was back in 2014. So I'm really excited to relive this. Hopefully my levels are good enough, but I guess only time will tell. I'm not going to lie. This room is actually pretty cool. Like this whole door thing and the way that it opens and all of the decorations in this room. I had no idea this was back here and it's just so cool looking. I don't know if it looks this good just because of 117 HD, but I really like this place, which is very weird. So it is time to safe spot this demon. I did it a long time ago and I'm not really sure if I remember how. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that was really close. I'm not going to lie. I don't know why I can't hit him. Like, I th I'm pretty sure you could trap him here, but it's not working. My character keeps running forward. Oh, so I just have to stand on this square and I can hit him. Okay. Bro, where are you going? What? Why are you running? Why are you running? Oh my God. Where's this guy running to? All right, there we go. Finally. Okay, now we can finally go and get our anti-dragon shield. I could have sworn years and years and years ago you used to be able to get that as like as soon as possible. I thought you were just able to talk to the duke and get one, but maybe they changed it. I don't know why. Maybe it was being botted or something. The bots just ruin this game. The amount of measures that people need to take to go against bots is just so bad. I was planning on saying it, but I forgot. But we killed the demon at like almost exactly the three hour mark. So unfortunately, we obviously did not make it. But we were so close. We were so close. If we didn't have those other quests, we definitely would have made it. And there we go. The anti-dragon shield just pulls this whole outfit together. It looks so nice now. I am still genuinely shocked that we did every single free to play quest in what's probably going to end up being about three and a half hours, especially with the stats that we have and only having one agility with no energy potions or stamina potions. So I am extremely proud of how far we got in this time frame. Look at this guy ran out of runes splashing on a seagull. Let me kill that for you, buddy. Oh, level 39 magic. <laughs> I actually did not expect that, but I'm not complaining. And at level 39 magic, we unlock crumble the undead. I'm not sure if it's ever useful in members but I don't think it's too useful in free to play either. Unless there's a boss or something that it's good against. I have no idea. Why am I even talking? All right, we're finally going to Crandor. Let's talk to Captain Ned and let's get this cutscene going. I still remember the cutscene, that's for sure. And now that we're here, we're already getting attacked. I don't want to use too much food. I brought as much food as I possibly could. I also brought a Mithril Scimitar just in case magic isn't working and maybe I can flinch hit. I don't know any of the safe spots. I looked literally nothing up. I wanted this to be as authentic as possible. I actually haven't looked up a single thing ever since I started this account now that I'm thinking about it. The most I've ever done was price check things. But something I do remember about doing this quest is I got to make sure to go through this hidden door at the end of this hallway. Because if I die here, I'd be able to get back through Karamja as opposed to having to rebuild the ship and do all of that all over again. Trust me, I found that out the very first time I did Dragon Slayer, like in 2009 or something. And it's so ingrained in my head that I will never forget to do it ever again. But yeah, I hope that we have enough runes and food to actually survive. All right, I'm a little stressed. I'm already missing two food. I don't know any of the safe spots, but here we go. Oh my God, what? Why is she si Why is she hitting so fast? I'm gonna try to run over here and hide. How am I supposed to do this? Oh my God. And she shoots through it. What is going on? There is no way. How did I ever, what? And it's not helping that I literally have no run. I have no run at all. Dude, oh my God. I'm using so much food. I didn't even hit her really yet. I have to find a safe spot and I don't know if there is one. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Alright. I can't believe we found a safe spot. 
So what we're gonna try to do is flinch hit. I haven't flinch hit a single thing in over 10 years, and we're using magic, and I don't even know if you can flinch hit with magic, but it seems to be kind of working. For some reason, her dragon breath is still able to hit me. I think maybe because it comes so fast, but we're getting hit way, way less than we would be getting hit normally. I could barely even out eat what we were getting hit with earlier, but as long as I just keep this up, we should be going one for one. Maybe if I wait a little longer, I might be able to get a flinch where she doesn't hit me. So I've been doing this for a while now, and it seems like it's about a 50-50 chance whether or not she attacks me when I attack her. There's just no getting around it, it seems. I didn't look up any methods. I don't even know if this is viable or even a good safe spot even. But as long as we hang tough, hopefully we don't run out of this little bit of food that we have left, then maybe we actually stand a chance. I don't know. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I guess we teleport over to the head. I thought I had to run over there, but oh well to rip that bad boy right off. Absolutely beautiful. Let's teleport out of here because I remember the very first time I did this, I waited too long and she respawned and killed me. So let's get out of here right now and let's go turn in the quest. And it is time to finally finish Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer has been completed, giving us two quest points, the ability to equip rune and dragon plate bodies, and 18,650 strength and defense XP. We now have a total of 43 quest points, and those quest rewards got us up to 38 strength and 38 defense. It also advanced us five combat levels and got us up to combat level 44. But now that we've completed Dragon Slayer, you would think that we have every quest completed, but we actually don't. I did not complete Shield of Arav. I have both of the certificates I need, but I didn't find anybody to help complete it with me. So I'm going to go into the Shield of Arav CC and figure that out because it's currently 630 in the morning. When I started this three hour challenge, I didn't even look at what time it was when I started it. And I am very, very tired. So let's go get this thing done as quick as possible. Okay, so instantly after writing in this chat, turns out if I just go to world 301 with my certificate half, they'll just instantly trade me the other half. So let's hop on over. And there he is, and there's the certificate. All right, thank you, man. Now let's go talk to the king and get the final free-to-play quest that we have to do done. And all right, that's Shield of Arav, giving us our last free-to-play quest point in 600 GP, bringing our total quest points up to 44. We have now officially greenlogged every single free-to-play quest, and we did it all in about three and a half hours. I really wasn't sure if three hours was way too little of time to guess when I was setting up this challenge for myself. And if it wasn't for all of the new quests, we definitely would have gotten it done in that time frame. But I'm not complaining. I mean, who was going to complain about some free to play quests? Let's be real. I'm just happy to have everything green logged and we're finally done with everything that we need to do to become a member other than make 14 mil to buy a bond. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to do that. I might have to go on YouTube and look up weird free-to-play money-making guides, but hopefully I could just find a drop party and make a few mil at a time here and there. I'm honestly not too worried about it. I just wish that bonds were back at their original 2.53 mil price that they were when I started my Skiller series, because it's honestly insane. But anyway, this video has gone on way more than long enough. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new here and want to see how I make money for my bond, be sure to hit that subscribe button because not even I'm sure yet. So yeah, if you're waiting for me to get out of free to play, episode four is going to be the last free to play upload until we are a member. And then the whole entire world of RuneScape is going to open up to us. And I'll be able to try so many things that I've never done before and do so many really fun quests and stuff like that. I used to hate quests, but now I kind of find them fun, believe it or not. I just haven't done anything like this in so long. It isn't just grind skills, grind skills, grind skills. So that's enough yapping. I'll see you guys in the next video.